All right, so now let's actually move on. Let's move on uh, 15 through 18. We're going to be looking at deductive reasoning, right? Yesterday we talked about inductive. Today we're going to talk about deductive. Now, deductive is basically what lawyers do, right? A lawyer cannot use inductive. Inductive was yesterday, like three uh, patterns, right? A lawyer cannot show up and say, um, my last three defendants were not guilty, so this next one will be not guilty. Right, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for lawyers. The inductive is I'm gonna give you things, I'm gonna give you facts, and based on those facts, you have to come up with a decision. Now we're gonna use a lot, we're gonna use what we called the if and the then or conditional statements, or sometimes we just use statements like, for example, let's take a look at number 15. Here I have deductive reasoning. I said angles A and angle B are complementary. I got to remember what complementary means. Complementary means they add up to 90. The measurement of angle A is 25. So what is the measurement at angle B? For right now, I don't know what the measurement angle B is. We learn in algebra that when we don't know the value of something, we replace it with X. So I'm going to say right now it's X because I don't know. So for me to solve for ang measurement angle B, I'm going to say 25 plus x is equal to 90. Because I was told they're complementary. They, they add up to 90. Now I can solve for x, right? Let me subtract 25 on each side. 90 minus 25, it's 65. The, the measurement of angle B is 65. Let's take a look at number 16. If today's Wednesday, then tomorrow's Thursday. Now, here we're going to use what we call conditional statements. Some people call it the if and the then statements. There's an if part and there's a then part. So that's what we call the if and then or conditional statements. Now, for deductive reasoning, the first part, the if part, we usually call that hypothesis. You guys have heard that word in your science class. The then part, we call that the conclusion. If the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion has to be true. Now here, if today is Wednesday, then tomorrow is Thursday. That's one statement. The second statement is today is Wednesday. Okay, so they tell me the hypothesis is true. So what can we conclude? We're, I'm just going to write tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, that's true, right? Today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Okay. That's what I conclude. Now, let's take a look at here. If I live in Bakersfield, I live in California. Now, here, there's an if part. If I live in Bakersfield, and then usually there's a then part, but I don't have to because there's a comma. But for, for us to understand this better, then I'm going to write then I live in California. Okay, now that's my conditional statement. Here I have, I live in California. So what can we conclude? Notice, I didn't tell you the hypothesis was true. Remember, hypothesis is the if part. I told you the then part is true. So what can we conclude? I live in California. That's all I can conclude. How do you know I don't live in, I don't know, Fresno or Lamont, Delano, right? I can live somewhere else in Bakersfield. In order for us to say, to get something from the first statement, if I live in Bakersfield, I live in California, my hypothesis, the if part has to be true. Here's not given. Another way we're going to see it is here, like this one. There are four children, Amanda, Bill, Kathy and Dorothy that are in first, second, third, or fourth grade. So there's four kids and there's four grades, so one in each. Each child has a different favorite color, uh, has a blue, red, pink, or green. Use the clues below to figure out what grade each child's in and what their favorite color is. Okay, so here, let's see. The fourth grader is a boy who does not like pink. Okay, so I see Amanda, Bill, Kathy, and Dorothy. I only have a boy. 
And it says the fourth grader is a boy. So, okay. So I know Bill is fourth grader who does not like pink. Okay. there He could say blue, red, or green. I don't know. So let me read statement two. Dorothy is the youngest and likes blue. She's the youngest. So Dorothy is in first grade. She likes blue. So I know Dorothy's uh, grade level and color. Kathy is one grader ahead of Amanda. You notice Kathy and Amanda, they're one of them second grader, the other one's a third grader. But Kathy is ahead of Amanda. So I'm gonna say Amanda's second grade and Kathy's third grade. The second grader likes red. Okay, Amanda's the second grader, she likes red. Okay, remember the first statement, it says the fourth grader is a boy who does not like pink. So Bill cannot be blue because Dorothy's blue, cannot be red because it's Amanda. He, he cannot be pink because he doesn't like pink. So Bill likes green and guess what? Kathy likes pink. So in your homework, I'm gonna ask for specific stuff, like kind of like, what is Amanda's grade? Or what is Amanda's favorite color? Or Kathy or Dorothy or Bill. But this is what we call deductive reasoning. 